Hi guys, this is the second part of a series of videos on setting up a CCTV system on your server. This video covering all about the cameras and hardware, as well as focusing on the security of your cameras and CCTV system. Sounds interesting? Then let's get started. Hey there, so let's carry on from part one, and firstly in this part, let's talk a little bit about the different types of cameras that we can use. Let's talk about the pros and cons of each, and the security considerations of each. Okay, so let's talk about Wi-Fi cameras. While these seem to be getting more and more popular, because people don't want to have to wire up their cameras, they just want to plug them into a power source and have done with it. And yes, some of the cameras you see don't even need a power source. Things like Amazon's Ring Smart Doorbell, they take batteries, and you can get other Wi-Fi cameras that work with a little solar panel. So on the face of it, these devices seem really great. But I'm going to tell you something the sellers of these cameras won't tell you. I'm going to tell you the reasons why you should never use a Wi-Fi CCTV camera. And the obvious reason, which all of you guys already know, is obviously if your Wi-Fi network goes down, then so do your CCTV cameras. And with your Wi-Fi network going down, I don't mean you losing internet connection. Basically, it's any situation that will stop the camera being able to talk to the wireless access point. And reasons for this can just be a weak signal, or just a faulty access point. But did you know it's actually really easy to make a Wi-Fi camera actually disconnect from its access point and therefore stop functioning? So without going into too much detail, as this is not a tutorial on how to attack Wi-Fi, basically an attacker could sit outside of your house and use a passive network recon tool, such as the program Kismet, to analyse your Wi-Fi network. And no, the attacker doesn't actually need your Wi-Fi password or to be connected to your network to do this. So with this tool, an attacker can see your Wi-Fi network name and be able to see all of the Wi-Fi devices that are connected to your network. This includes the MAC addresses of all of the Wi-Fi devices. From these MAC addresses, it's really easy to tell which one is a security camera. And by using the MAC addresses of the cameras, the attacker can do something called a de-authentication attack. And how this attack works is the attacker from his laptop will send a signal to the MAC addresses of all of the Wi-Fi cameras, pretending to be your Wi-Fi access point, telling them to disconnect from the network. And this will keep happening again and again until the attacker stops their deauthorization attack. So during the attack, all of your CCTV cameras are blind. And yes, that includes your lovely Amazon Ring doorbell. So a tech-savvy porch pirate who wants to steal the packages that have been left delivered on your front porch just has to pull up outside your house in their car, run the attack on the ring doorbell, walk up to your house and steal the packages, get back in his car and drive off. Then when you come home from work and review the footage, there's just a little gap in time when all that happened. So while a ring doorbell might be a useful device to have, it's no substitute for also having a wired camera that looks over the front of your property. So I hope that now I've put you off Wi-Fi cameras, now that you know the flaws about these products that the vendors selling them would rather you didn't know about. So when setting up our CCTV system, we want to use wired cameras. They're much more reliable and they're not susceptible to that type of attack which the Wi-Fi ones are. So with the wired cameras, we have two different types that we can use. We can use just a standard type which needs to have its own independent power supply, or we can use a PoE camera which draws its power across the Cat5 or Cat6 cable directly to the camera. This type of camera is much better because you only need one wire that goes to the camera. So how does the camera actually get its power? Well, this can be done in one of two ways. You can use something called a PoE injector, which basically sits anywhere along the Cat5 cable and plugs into a power socket and then injects the power into the Ethernet cable. Now this might be okay if you just got one or two cameras, but the best thing to use is a PoE network switch. This type of network switch will basically supply power to any devices that are plugged into it that need it. So you just wire up your cameras and then plug the Ethernet cable directly into the switch. Now there's many different types of camera from different vendors that you can buy that are PoE cameras. 
you can buy ones with all sorts of resolutions from 720p, 1080p up to 4K cameras. Personally, I use 1080p cameras. I think that resolution's absolutely fine for CCTV. I'll leave 4K for when I'm watching a good movie. Now, you don't have to buy expensive cameras, and you can pick up pretty decent cameras on Amazon for less than $50 each. And the type that I use are by a company called SV3C, and I found them to be a really good quality and a really good price. And if I remember, I'll put some Amazon links in the description below to the cameras that I use. But also I've got friends that tell me the Rio Link cameras, they're pretty good as well. But whatever cameras you buy, I really suggest that you make sure that they support ONVIF. And that stands for Open Network Video Interface Forum. If your camera has this feature, it's probably going to be easier to set up getting a video stream from it than one that doesn't. So once you've picked and bought your IP cameras, whether you're going to use a PoE injector or a PoE switch, then there's another security issue that we need to think about. And that security issue is actually having a PoE camera on the outside of the building itself. And so why is that, you might ask? Okay, so imagine you own a business and it's got some PoE cameras all around the premises. I'm an attacker and I want to gain access to your network. And each one of your cameras is basically a network cable hanging out the wall of your building. So I'm going to unplug one of your cameras and I'm going to plug a Raspberry Pi into the network port. And my Raspberry Pi is going to be kindly powered by your electricity supply through the PoE on your LAN cable. And then I'm going to go home and access the Raspberry Pi that's going to be running Kali Linux over TeamViewer. And then take my time going around attacking your network. Now, a lot of people often forget this type of attack. Basically, it's just a physical attack because it's plugging into a network cable. So the golden rule when you're setting up PoE cameras is to put them on their own independent network that's separate from all of the other computers and devices that you might have. Now, there are two ways you can do this. The best way is if you have a managed or smart switch. Now, a managed switch is a more advanced type of network switch, which you can log into a web UI and make changes into how the switch behaves. So then, from within the managed switch, you would create what is called a VLAN, or Virtual Local Area Network. This basically is a separate virtual network that has virtual boundaries that can only be crossed through the router. And we'd put our IP cameras onto this VLAN. And so basically what this would do is it would keep the cameras and our normal network separate, but without requiring any extra hardware. Now I'm not going to go into about VLANs in this video. That will be in a future video that I'll be making soon. Now if you don't have a managed or smart switch, then you can achieve this by using two separate, normal, dumb network switches. You'd have your normal network switch connected to all of your computers, your server and your Wi-Fi router. The second network switch would connect to all of your cameras and then would connect into a second network port onto the server upon which you're running the CCTV software. So now obviously all of the cameras and the CCTV docker container would need to be given their own static IP addresses. And that's because the second network set up this way wouldn't have its own DHCP server. But we'll take a look at that in more detail when we set up Shinobi in the third part of this series. So the best solution for setting up your IP cameras is to use a PoE Smart Managed Switch. That way you can power all of your cameras from the switch and also give them their own VLAN to live on. The switch that I use is a Netgear GS324TP. Now this is a 24 port PoE Smart Switch. But if you don't need so many network ports, a really good cheap option is the TP-Link TLSG108PE. This is an 8 port managed switch, 4 of which have PoE capability. So a great option if you only need to run up to 4 cameras. Now again I'll put some links to these products in the description. Ok so we've looked at some potential security flaws when using CCTV cameras. But there's one other security hole that we really need to shore up. And I think this is especially true if we're using some cheap Chinese brand IP cameras. So we don't want any of our cameras to be able to talk to the internet. And so on our firewall router, we want to block all of these cameras being able to communicate outside of our local area network. Because our CCTV cameras, they don't need to be reporting back to some server in China, giving all our details to the mothership. Now don't worry, this won't stop us being able to view our cameras remotely. 
because we'll only block the individual IP addresses of each camera from being able to communicate online. Our CCTV software, for example Shinobi, which I'm going to be setting up in the next video, will have its own IP address, and this IP address will be able to communicate out to the internet, allowing us to view our cameras remotely. So basically the best practice is to make sure all of your CCTV cameras either have a static IP address or are given the same IP address each time by your router using IP address reservation. Then we block all of those IP addresses from being able to communicate online and allow our CCTV software to be able to be accessed online through our reverse proxy which will also be running on our server. Now, if you're running PFSense as your firewall, then please see my 2 minute tips video about blocking IP cameras on PFSense. And if you want to know how to set up a reverse proxy to securely access things on your network from the outside, then please see my video on setting up a reverse proxy. Now, if in your router you don't have the option to block IP addresses, with the SV3C cameras, inside the configuration under network, we've got a connectivity check. And if we test this, we can see that these cameras can see the internet. So to stop that, another way to do that is to go to the network settings, just set the IP to be a static IP, and just make the default gateway to be wrong. Now unfortunately with these cameras we can't use 127.0.0.1, so I'm just going to put in 1.0.0.1, and just save that. And now when we go to do a connect check, then the check's going to fail. So a simple way of blocking your IP cameras from going online is just setting the default gateway just to be something wrong. Okay, so that's the IP camera side of things covered. However, as we're running a CCTV system on our server that can be constantly recording footage, then we need to think about that too. Now, I would highly recommend not recording any footage to either the array or your cache drive. It's much better to have a dedicated unassigned drive where the CCTV footage can be recorded. And the reason for this is because when writing any data to the array, it writes both to the data disk and the parity disk or disks if you have two. And this is bad for two reasons. The obvious reason is just how much wear and tear are being put on both the data drives and the parity drives. But secondly, because if you want to write any other data to the array at the same time that your CCTV footage is being recorded, then it will be slower as a result. And this is the case even if the data has been written to a different drive inside of the array, because both of the drives will be needing to update the parity disk whilst the writes are going on. So just avoid writing any CCTV footage onto the array, and instead use a separate drive that's outside of the array and record the footage onto that unassigned drive. I had another old hard drive lying around that was really old and because it was so old I wouldn't really trust it to be as part of the array as a data drive but I thought I'd make use of it as an unassigned drive and record my CCTV footage to it. So hardware wise that's all I can think of that we need to consider. But if there's anything you can think of that I've missed then please add it to the comments below. So. In the first video, we looked at the various different software solutions that we can use to run a CCTV server. So let's move on to the next video, install Shinobi and get some cameras configured. But before that, I just want to thank all of my patrons and supporters out there. Thank you so much for supporting me and giving me the opportunity to be able to make these videos. And if you'd like to join this great bunch of people and support the channel, then please see the links in the description below. And as always, if you like this video, then please hit that like button. Share the video with anyone else who you think might like it too. And if you're not already a subscriber and you want to see more videos like this, then please subscribe to the channel. But for now, it's time for me to go. So whatever you're up to for the rest of the day, I hope it's good and I'll catch you in the next...